Charlie Bucket saw saw that they, they were now back in what one of those long pink corridors, with many other pink corridors leading out of it. Mr. Wonka uh, was rushing along in front, turning left and right and right and left, and Grandpa Joe was saying, Keep a good hold of my chin, Charlie. It, it would be terrible getting lost in here. Mr. Wonka was saying, No time for any more messing around. Messing about. We never get anywhere at the rate we've been going. And on he rushed down the endless pink corridors with his black top hat perched on top of his head and his plum-colored velvet coattails flying out behind him like a flag in the wind. They passed another door, then another, and another. There were doors every twenty paces or so along the corridor now, and they, they all had something written on them, and strange clinking noises were coming from behind several of them, and delicious smells came wafting through the keyholes, and sometimes little jets of colored steam shot out from the cracks underneath. Grandpa Joe and Charlie were half running, half walking, and to keep up with Mr. Wonka, but they were able to read what it said on quite a few doors as they heard we'd buy eatable marshmallow pillows. It said on one, marshmallow pil pillows are terrific, shouted Mr. Wonka as he dashed by. They'll be all the rage when I get them into the shops. No time to go in, though. No time to go in. Lickable wallpaper for nursery. It said on the next door, "Lovely stuff, lickable wallpaper!" cried Mr. Wonka, rushing past. It has pictures of fruits on it: bananas, apples, oranges, grapes, pineapples, strawberries, and snozberries. Snozberries," said Mike TV. "Don't interrupt," said Mr. Wonka. "The wallpaper has pictures of these fruits printed on it, and when you lick the picture of a banana, it tastes like a banana. When you lick." A strawberry, it tastes like strawberry. And when you lick a snozberry, it tastes exactly like a snozberry. But what does a snozberry taste like? You're mumbling again, said Mr. Wonka. Speak louder next time. On we go. Hurry up. Hot ice cream for cold days, it said and on the next door. Extremely useful in the winter, said Mr. Wonka, rushing on. Hot ice cream warms you up. No end in freezing weather. I also make hot ice cubes for putting in hot drinks. Hot ice cubes make hot drinks hotter. Cows that give chocolate milk, it said on the next door. Ah, my pretty little cows, cried Mr. Wonka. How I love those cows. But why can't we see them, asked Veruca Salt. Why do we have to... We'll go rushing on past all these lovely rooms. We shall stop in time, called out Mr. Walker. Don't be so madly impatient. Fizzy lifting drinks, it said on the next door. Oh, those are fabulous, cried Mr. Wonka. They fill you with bubbles, and the bubbles are full of a special kind of gas. This gas is so terrifically lifting that it lifts you right off the ground, just like a balloon. And, you, and up you go until your head hits the ceiling, and there you stay. But how do you come down again, asked little Charlie. You do a burp, of course said Mr. Wonka. You do a great, big, long, rude burp, and up comes the gas, and down comes you. But don't drink it outdoors. There's no no knowing how high up you'll be carried if you do that. I gave some to an Oompa Loompa once out in the backyard. He went up and up and up and disappeared out of sight. It was very sad. I never saw him again. He should have burped, Charlie said. Of course he should have burped, said Mr. Wonka. I said there shouting, burp, you silly ass, burp, or you'll never come down again. But, but he didn't, or couldn't, or wouldn't. I don't know which. Maybe he was too polite. He must be on the moon by now. 
On the next door it said, Square candies that look round. Wait, cried Mr. Wonka, skidding to a halt, skidding suddenly to a halt. I am very proud of my square candies that look round. Let's take a peek.